old Alabama gardener, and today I'm talking about a blood test called C-reactive protein, one I think everyone should have. So now I have a question for you. Are you on the road to better health? If your answer is yes, then you really need to know what your C-reactive protein number is. So that gives you a clue that this video is all about C-reactive protein. Now, C-reactive protein is commonly called CRP, which of course stands for C-reactive protein. Now, you know, it's interesting. When I talk with people about their health and I ask them what their CRP number is, I am totally surprised that most don't know what I'm asking about, or they may know of CRP, but they don't know what their number is. So in this video, I'm going to discuss some of that kind of stuff. I'm going to be talking about, well, what is CRP? What is it? And why is it so important that you know what your CRP number is? And then I'm going to give you a little tip on about how you're going to know it. And then we'll talk about what is a good number, a good CRP number that you want to have. Now, I encourage you to watch all the way to the end of the video because at the end of it, uh, I will show you my CRP numbers uh, from a blood test that's been taken over the past, um, oh, about seven months or so. So, I invite you to stay tuned to the end to do that. And when you see my numbers of my CRP, you'll see how my numbers went from bad, being a bad number, to a very good number. So stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about what is C-reactive protein. And, and the short answer is it's a protein made by your liver and it's produced when you have something going on in your body that's causing inflammation. Uh, it could be something as simple as an injury. Uh, you hurt your hand, your elbow, uh, or it could be something much more serious, uh, such as a very serious uh, illness, cancer, things like that. So here's a very important point then. When the, when the inflammation in your body is high, for whatever reason, then your C-reactive protein number is also going to be high. That's why it becomes such an important marker of health. Why is this information about C-reactive protein so important to you? And the answer is when you're injured or you have an infection, your body creates inflammation. And then C-reactive protein is sent into your blood to help fight that inflammation. So it goes to the point where the inflammation is happening and this is how your body protects tissue from further damage and further injury by whatever's going on with you. Now, since I am primarily talking about uh, heart and artery issues, here's an important point, so listen up. A high CRP can indicate inflammation inside the arteries of your heart. That's an important point. So keep that in mind. That's why we are so interested, if we have heart issues, that's why we are so interested in our CRP number. Now, but uh, a high CRP can also indicate a higher risk for other diseases such as cancer and diabetes and uh, you just almost name any disease and a high CRP is going to be an indicator that that is either developing or pretty far along and you need to do something. So the bottom line here is this. 
know your CRP and monitor it over months. You don't want to just take one reading. You want to take a reading and then some months later another reading and then some months later another reading so that you get an idea of what's happening. So you want to know if your CRP is going up, going down, or just staying the same. So we're talking about CRP or C-reactive protein. And so the question becomes then what or how do I know what my CRP number is? And the answer is by getting a blood test. Now, many doctors don't do a CRP test. I don't know why, but uh, they don't. But you can get your own CRP test done, your own blood test, uh, at other laboratories. You don't have to have a doctor's permission or a doctor's prescription or a doctor's orders to do that. Now, I'm talking about the uh, CRP blood test. You could get just a CRP blood test results, but it's usually included in uh, a regular blood test that a doctor might prescribe. Um, along with a lot of other blood markers. Now here's a good thought. As a minimum, you would want to get what's called an inflammation panel. And that consists of four different tests, three of which are blood tests and one of which is a urine test. But because I'm talking about heart issues right now, uh, I'm going to not talk about those other tests. Uh, we'll do that in a later video. So then, what is a good CRP number? A low CRP number is an indication of a lower risk, especially because we're talking about heart attacks and or artery issues. So less than, less than one is a desired number. And less than 0 0.5, or that means half of one, that's even a better number. So you can see different levels, uh, different things that'll say one's good, some will say less than one, but if you've got two or 2.5 or three, that's not good. You want it to be under one. Now, let's say that you've had three CRP blood tests done over the past 12 months or a year, and your CRP number is always high, higher than one, you could ask the question, what does this mean? And the answer is, it means you have inflammation going on somewhere in your body. Now, if I had inflammation going on in my body, I would be working to find out what's causing it, and I would be doing something to reduce it. Now, this condition would probably require some other tests to figure out what's happening, what's going on. And it will probably require the help of a doctor. So, there's where the doctors come in. Now, remember, a continuously and I'm talking about over months, a continuously high CRP would be an indication that possibly, and I emphasize possibly, some serious condition, something that you would call a disease, is developing. And if it were me, and I was having continuously high CRP readings, I would be getting it checked out. I'd be going to the doctor and saying, we got to find out what's going on here because I don't want this to lead me to a heart attack. Now that brings us to my CRP numbers. And notice in July of 2018, my CRP number was 2.5. Although the report said I was average. Now when I explain what happened, which I'll do next, 
uh, you will understand that average is not good enough. You, average, you don't want to be average. You, you got to be better than average. So by October, looking at the same chart, I had brought my CRP number down to 0.58. But even though that's considered a good number, it's still slightly more than 0.5. In other words, half of one. 0.58 is almost 0.6. But looking at the chart in November, I had lowered it to 0.4. So now I was really getting down in the good range. Next, I'm going to tell you what happened, and then you'll understand why 2.5 or quote being average was not good. So let me tell you a little bit about why a CRP of 2.5, or as I was considered average, is not good. Not good enough. So in the first week of May of 2018, about two months before I had the July CRP blood test, I had an artery begin closing and it required a stent to prevent a heart attack. And then... The last week of August 2018, before the October blood test, I had another artery begin closing again, requiring a stent to prevent a heart attack. Two stents in a six-month period. Now remember, all this time, my CRP was considered to be average at 2.5. But here I am having these stents these arteries beginning to close and requiring a stent to keep me to keep me going. See, with an average of CRP of 2.5, I still had two artery events requiring stents that probably saved my life. This was a wake-up call for me. And if you have high CRP, it could be a wake-up call for you too. See, I knew I had to make changes in my lifestyle, doing all I can to prevent this from happening again if I wanted to continue living. And I like living, so I definitely wanted to continue. So now I ask you, at least when it comes to CRP and that number, do you want to be average? And I obviously I already know your answer. The answer is no. You gotta be better than average. This is the second video in my series on health. And I have talked about the carotid, this is this artery right here in your neck, carotid intima media thickness test. And now I've talked about the C-reactive protein test. So what I'll be doing is I'll be making more videos. And I've got to emphasize as I have time because it takes me quite a bit of time to make this video. I'll be making more videos on other tests that I think is important and required to get you on the road to better health. So thank you for watching.